and a very good day to you and welcome to the Revival Train. That's right, that train is leaving the station. All aboard, we are expecting God to speak to us very, very particularly today. I want to speak to you about a subject that is very close to God's heart, and that is loyalty. Now, I looked up the Oxford Dictionary to find out the literal meaning of the word loyalty or to be loyal. It says, showing firm and constant support or allegiance to a person. And that is something that we don't see too much of these days, do we? Loyalty. When you stand, you know, you only really see um, the, uh, or taste the uh, nectar from an orange when it gets squeezed. And often loyalty only comes out, really comes out, when the heat is on. And uh, I want to tell you, we are living in the last days. There is no doubt about that at all. If you can't see that, you are as blind as a bat. And I really mean that. Everywhere you look in the world, you can see the signs that Jesus spoke about. Jesus is not coming soon. He's on his way, I tell you. You've heard us say that many times on the revival train. And this is the time where we need to be loyal, first of all, to God. And then secondly, to our husband, wife, our spouse, to our children, to our loved ones, and to our fellow Christians. This is not a time to stab somebody in the back. This is not a time to abandon ship. This is not a time for every man for himself. That does not work. If we go to the book of Mark, chapter 14, I'm just going to read one verse, and I was just saying to the the production team just a minute ago, this must be the saddest um, scripture in the Bible. And that's found in Mark chapter 14 and verse 50. And I'm reading out of the New King James Version. Then they all forsook him and fled. All means all. You know, we talk about the loyalty of John, the Lord's disciple. He fled too. All. Everybody. Jesus was left on his own. They all forsook him. He said, can't you just wait? Can't you just pray just for a moment? You know, my dear friend, the tragedy is that they all fled from the only person in the universe that could have helped them. That's right. The safest place for them to be was right next to the master. If you look at uh, verse 31, just go back again. On the same chapter, Mark chapter 14 and verse 31, and listen to what uh, Peter says. But he spoke more vehemently, if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. Remember Jesus said before the cock crows, you'll deny me three times. No ways, Lord, even if I have to die, I won't leave you. And what happened? When the high priest soldiers came into the garden with clubs and swords, Peter and all the other disciples fled, and they left the master all by himself. Are you maybe feeling today a little bit disappointed? I'm speaking about you, sir, you, madam. Are you feeling disappointed today? Are you feeling very painful? Are you, are you going through a divorce at the moment? That is a terrible thing, you know. It tears the heart out of somebody, a divorce. You know why? Because a divorce is a broken covenant. See, when you make a covenant with one another in the sight of God, it's not to be broken. And there is a tremendous amount of disappointment that takes place. I'm not pointing fingers at anybody. Remember, this revival train is committed to speaking the truth. So if you, maybe your wife has gone off with another man. Maybe your husband is having an affair with somebody in the office and it is tearing your heart out. And I can really feel for you. I have never been on that road. I've been on other roads. But loyalty is so important. I want to tell you, I want to be quite honest with you. I am very jealous of my wife. And I'm a grandfather 11 times over. 
And we've been married for almost 50 years. I don't like to see other men manhandling my wife. And that's not even a joke. Even at a church meeting, I don't like men hanging over my wife. I don't like it. And you know, that's not a bad kind of jealousy. I mean, the Lord says he is jealous of his people. He's jealous of you and me. It's in Exodus. I, my name is jealous, the Lord says. So we need to understand something. The most important thing is loyalty. You've got to stand together, especially when the going gets tough. I don't know how many times in our farming career, Jill and I, when we had nothing left, we had to stand together. It's not the time to pull apart. And that's where so many of us get it wrong. That's the time that you need to pull together. You need to look after each other. You've heard that saying, I've got your back, brother. I've got your back, sister. What does that mean? It means I'm watching over you. You see, the armor of God that the Christian puts on, has got no defense mechanism in the back. Why? Because you're not supposed to turn your back on the enemy. But if you've got loyal men and women that are standing with you, that is amazing. You know, as I'm sharing this with you, I'm thinking about that terrible, terrible tragedy that took place. I think it was somewhere in the Middle East. Remember, there was those migrant workers from Egypt. They were Coptic Christians, Orthodox Christians. They had gone on a work um, party to Libya. These were migrant workers. They weren't pastors. They weren't priests. I don't even think they were elders in the church. They were workers. They weren't even professionals, just ordinary working men. And they got caught by ISIS, I think it was, in the Middle East. And they were stuck in a, in a room for three weeks when ISIS was deciding what they were going to do with them. But there was a black man that was also put in there. I think he came from Chad or Niger. And he was in there with them. And he wasn't even a Christian. After three weeks, they brought them out. They put them in orange overalls. I've seen the footage. ISIS took the, the footage. I don't know why. They shot themselves in the foot, didn't they? They probably thought they were going to frighten the Christians. And they actually videoed what they were doing. And they walked these men, 21 of them, along the seashore. That would have probably been the Mediterranean Sea. They got them to kneel. And behind each one of these men, these prisoners, these men of God, in orange overalls, was a man standing with a sword, and he was dressed in black. And he had a black mask on. And they started with the first one. And they said, all you have to do is to be disloyal to Jesus. That's, in effect, what they were saying. All you have to do is to deny the Lord. All you have to do is to recant, say I don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and we'll let you live. That's all you have to do. They said, we can't do that. And they started to decapitate them. They cut their heads off, one by one. And they got right to the end, to the last man. He was a black man from Africa. And they said to him, and what about you? And he said, me, I'm with them. They cut his head off as well. I think you'll see those 21 men around the throne of the Lord Jesus Christ, where all the martyrs are. There are so many martyrs at the moment in the world, not just the Middle East, in places like Korea, in places like Iran, in places in India, where they will not be disloyal to the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to tell you folks, we're going to see some big surprises in heaven. There are going to be people sitting around the throne of the Lord Jesus Christ that you and I have never heard of. Not the big speakers, not the guys with the big mouths like me. No. I've always said, Lord, I want to be like David. Lord, I'll be more than happy just to be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord so I can just look and gaze upon His beauty all the days of my life. Loyalty is very, very important in these last days. Maybe you've uh, just broken up with your friend. And you're really cut up about it. You say, Angus, the guy was, you know, we were good mates. We went to school together. We played sport together. And we're just broken up. That is a, so, a very sad thing to deal with. Maybe it's a business partner that's let you down. Eh? You went into business. You were good friends. Been there, done that. Eh? 
And as soon as the money comes across the table, the relationship changes. I don't know why. Maybe it's the love of money which is the root of all evil. Not money, but the love of money. And it's broken that partnership, and you're really upset. You said he's been disloyal to me. He wasn't honest. And that can break a man in pieces. Maybe today you're feeling totally deserted. Maybe you feel the pastor in the church has not been looking after you since this uh, coronavirus has surfaced its ugly head. Maybe you're feeling we don't, we don't see him. We, we, we don't even know where he is. You're feeling totally deserted. Now, there's a reason for these things, but we don't think about it, do we? Just when you needed your brother, he wasn't there, right? You needed him to stand with you. You were going through a tough time in your life, and what happened? He disappeared like the mist. Burns off in the early morning when the sun comes up. Where were you when I needed you? Jesus asked the disciples only once, I want you to stand with me. I want you to pray with me. And they let him down, every single one of them. Lord, have mercy on us. That's all I can say. Because loyalty is of, an, of absolute importance in the Christian's life. Oh, I know exactly how you feel. Oh, yeah, yes. I've been there. You know, if I could take my shirt off now and turn around, you would see the scars in my back where I've been stabbed by people. What people? People that I love. People that are close to me. You see, the devil wouldn't get that close to me. I can see him from a mile away. I wouldn't let a stranger come into that area. It's people that you love. And how many people have we, yes, been disloyal to? Maybe unintentionally. We really need to stand together. Remember the, the family that uh, prays together stays together. Where's the hardest place to be a Christian? In your own home. That's it. And that is where loyalty is required. We don't speak about our family outside. We don't go and skin her all around the countryside. That is not being loyal. That is actually being very disloyal. We really need to stand together. Sometimes, you know, this kind of work that I'm doing, one day you're a hero, the next day you're a bum, as it were. And I'm not being disrespectful by saying that. And, you know, when things are going well for you, you've got so many friends, you can't contain them all. <laughs> and then when you do something wrong... Or not even that. If you are misquoted, misunderstood, they just disappear. I don't want to get involved. Eh? They told me, I've read about, you know, in a, in a city like, say, New York City, where you get a woman or a young guy who's been, um, been, been um, robbed in public and maybe even knifed, and people just walk down the other side of the street. They didn't see it. They don't want to get involved. That's not loyalty. We've got to stand up. We've got to stand up for each other. We've got to love each other. Jesus Christ has never, ever been disloyal to you, sir, or to me. Prove it, Angus. Well, if you look at his hands, you'll see he's got holes in his hands. And he's got a big gaping hole in his side. He was not disloyal to you. He could have said to his father, in fact, he said, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. In the garden, just before the soldiers arrested him and all the disciples fled and were disloyal to him. He could have said, I can't do this. And his father would have taken him home. But he didn't, did he? He remained faithful. He went right through it. They pulled his beard out. They beat him. They put a crown of thorns on his head. They treated him like vermin. Right? They made him carry that cross. They whipped him. And then they put him on the cross. And he died there. And right to the end, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. He remained faithful and loyal to the end. Loyalty is very, very high on the Lord's agenda. I want to tell you that. And disloyalty is very poor. You know, I've said it before. Peter, the big fisherman, Lord, I will never leave you. Lord, I'll die for you. And he denied him three times. But you know, it's an amazing thing. Down in Galilee, it's my favorite place, by the way, Peter's Landing, a place called Tabga, where Jesus fed the 5,000, right there. When the Lord saw Peter that early morning, 
him and his disciples, they were all fishing. Remember, I'm going fishing. Actually, disloyalty. I'm going back. I'm leaving this Christianity thing. I'm going back to my trade. Maybe I'm speaking to a man here who's been hurt, badly hurt, in the church. Yeah. Maybe you're a pastor. And you said, I've had enough, Angus. I'm going back to my trade. I was doing very well before. I'm not, uh, I'm just, go I'm just had enough. Be careful. God is talking to you. He says, no, 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 no. You signed up. You said you'd do it. You must do it. Jesus stood on the seashore. I know that area very well. I've been there many times. I've taken groups of Christians there. And he said, boys, did you catch anything? Remember? No, no. They couldn't see him. It must have been a bit misty. Throw your net on the other side. Now, these were professional fishermen. Well, let's do it. Throw it over. And up came 153 exactly. They call them St. Peter's fish. It's like a big bream. First miracle was the net never broke. The net was never designed to carry 153 fish. That's a miracle. Pull the, the fish into the boat. And then John, John loved Jesus so much. He said to Peter, that voice, I know that voice. That's the voice of the Lord. And the Bible says, Peter, I don't know why he did that. I'm going to ask him when I get to heaven. He took his cloak and he put it on. And he bailed out of that boat and he must have been half walking, half swimming. And he got to the shore before the rest. Remember then the Lord asked Peter three times. Peter, do you love me? Lord, you know I love you. Feed my sheep. Peter, do you love me? Lord, you know I love you. And then the third time, Peter was heart sore. He really was. Lord, you know all things. He said, take care of my lambs. Folks, I want to tell you that even though Peter denied the Lord, the fact that he repented and he came back to God, the Lord then used him when he was baptized in the Holy Spirit. The first sermon he preached, 3,000 people came to Christ. I've been preaching for 42 years. When you see 3,000 converts, man, that is something to see. Why? Because the Lord baptized him in his Holy Spirit. And Peter's whole life changed. You talk about loyalty? Eventually, they crucified Peter, didn't they? And the legend goes that they crucified him upside down. Why? Because he said, I am not worthy to be crucified like my master. Big change. From the, 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 the disciple who said, I'll die for you. And he ran away and denied the Lord and was disloyal to the Lord. Now he's getting crucified upside down. And they tell me that his wife was killed as well. And he just kept saying to her, remember the Lord. Friends, I want to tell you, it's time for you and me to be loyal. To be loyal to who? To be loyal to the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to read that uh, definition again of the word loyalty. It is showing firm and constant support or allegiance to a person. It's not how you start. It's how you finish the race that counts. It's no good saying, well, I've served the Lord for 40 years. I've done my bit. You can't say that. First sermon I ever preached in the little Methodist church here in the main street of Great Town. I was in the vestry at the back and all the elders laid their hands on me and I was so nervous. And the one said to me, well, get in there, my boy, and get going, because I've done my bit. I was only three months in the Lord at the time, but I remember that that didn't sit well with me. I felt like saying, sir, have you, have you ever sh shed any blood for the sake of the gospel? Have you ever suffered physically? I've done my bit. We can never do our bit. We can never say to the Lord, well, Lord, you know, I'm tired now, and I'm, I'm going back to the ranch. No, 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 no. When we sign up, it's forever. Like those 21 martyrs in the Middle East from Egypt. Those men, you know, I, I saw an interview of one of the wives. These were young men, folks. These weren't old men. They were young migrant workers. They were working in Libya to get money to send home to their families in Cairo. The one woman, a young girl, I would have put her in her early 20s. And her husband had been martyred. And the interviewer said, and how is it with you? And her face was radiant. It was shining. She said, for me, I am so proud. I'm so honored that my husband has died for Jesus. 
You see, in the Middle East, it's an honor to die the death of a martyr. But we in the West, we will do everything and everything to save our own skin. Isn't that right? And I'm talking about myself as well. We'll do anything to preserve our lives. Not in the Middle East. It's the opposite way around. You know why? Because their eyes are not on this world. Their eyes are in heaven. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. We walk by faith and not by sight. So for them, this is not our, their permanent home. So she knows her husband has gone ahead to prepare a place for them. And she was so happy. To me, you know, I, I, I want to be honest with you. I look at that and I think, wow, Lord. You know, I, I haven't even begun. That's what changed uh, John Wesley's life, you know. Coming back from America on that sailing boat when they got into that storm and the ship was literally sinking. The waves were broken, breaking across the deck. And he saw that little band of Moravians, men and women, boys and girls, clinging to the mast and singing hymns because they thought tonight we're going to have supper with Jesus. And that's when he realized, I don't even know God. And then when he went to that little Bible study in Aldersgate in London, he said, a strange warmth came over my heart. He said, scales fell from my eyes. And the loyalty really started. That man is a small little man. He stood five foot six. He rode a horse 225,000 miles. He preached 40,000 sermons. He died at 89 years old. They said he wasn't sick. He just plain wore out. And he went to be with the Lord. We need to be loyal. Loyalty is a very, very important thing in somebody's life. I know my own wife, Jill, and she won't mind me saying that. To her, loyalty is so important. When you are going to get married, make sure that you're going to go and stay the course. Remain loyal and faithful to one another. Why? Because it brings glory to the name of the Lord. Do not be like a fair-weather Christian. What is a fair-weather Christian? Well, a fair-weather Christian is, you know, when the weather is fair, man, he's with you. He is loyal. He's going with you the whole way. As soon as the dark clouds come over and the waves start getting bigger and the boat starts getting into trouble, he's, he's deserted. He's off. He's gone. He doesn't want to see you. We need to understand that you and I are living in perilous times. These are times when I'm telling you the times that have been foretold in this book, the Bible. And I want to tell you right now that the Lord Jesus Christ is not coming soon. No, he's not coming soon. He's on his way, I tell you. And you need to be ready. This is not a time that you can run away and desert your friends, desert your family, desert the church. Christians will be persecuted. Why? Because the Bible tells us. And this is the time that we need to be loyal. Who to? First of all, to God. All roads do not lead to heaven. Do you know that I've just come out of a funeral service? That's right. I, had to, I was asked to take the funeral. And I said to the people, are you ready? Because the Lord's not coming soon. He's on his way. People are going home every minute of the day. And you and I need to be ready. We don't know when God's going to call us. And when he does call us, we need to recognize his voice. And he needs to know that you and I will remain faithful, steadfast, immovable, like the rock of Gibraltar. Strong, never moving. Doesn't matter what the weather is. I want to tell you a story and this is very important. This story has touched my life very, very deeply. Many, many years ago, when I left Zambia to come and start farming here at Shalom, my children were very young. In fact, they weren't even all born. My oldest son, Andy, was seven years old. So one day, there was a fire broke out in this area. In the winter here in South Africa, what happens is the frost, kills all the grass, and it goes tinderbox dry, unlike Europe and parts of the Americas. This particular day was a windy day, and a fire started, and it was a horrific fire. And I got my little tractor out. We didn't have much. We'd only just arrived. And I had a little firefighter on the back of my tractor, a little drum. I don't think it could take more than 200 liters, 44 gallons. 
And my little son, Andy, jumped on the tractor with me, and he was sitting just on the side. I'll never forget it. And we went to the fire with many others, and we started to fight this fire. And it looked like we were beating the fire. Okay? And as we were going down this hill, we were spraying, and the big, big flames, I'm telling you, they were six foot tall. They were just receding, receding, and we seemed to be getting the better of the fire. Then all of a sudden, the wind turned. And the wind started coming towards us. And I looked around and we were engulfed in fire. Me, the tractor, and my son. My little son. We carried on fighting the fire and miraculously, I managed to get that tractor into reverse and we got out of the flames without the tractor going up and burning up. We fought that fire for a few more hours after that. And then eventually... I can't remember whether we put it out or whether it just carried on burning over the next hill. We stopped the tractor and I sat on a rock. I'll never forget it. And this little boy came and he sat right next to me. Makes me emotional telling you. I said to him, Andy, son, didn't you see those flames encircling us? Yes, Dad. Well, son, why, why, why didn't you jump off the tractor and run while you could? He said, no, Dad. He says, I'm with you all the way. I've never forgotten that. He was loyal to his dad. And he's still loyal to me this day, to this day. And that is something that is so very important to me. There are others that have left me. Oh, yes. They've come here and they've said, we're going to stay here. And we're here for the duration. And we won't leave you. And they even try to give me money and say, we want to, we want to stay. And I've said, I don't want your money. Okay. And they have eventually, after sometimes a few years, sometimes longer, sometimes less, they've left us. I don't blame them. I don't uh, despise them. I pray for them. But I want to tell you, it's hurtful, eh? Especially when they promise you they're not going to leave. You know, we've got to trust the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, I will never leave you, and I will never forsake you. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5. And I can testify to that. The Lord has never once let me down. Everything he has told me and everything he has said in this book, everything has remained truthful. This is the truth. And this is the book that is loyal to the end. I want to say to you again, as I close, that you know something? The only person in the whole universe that could have helped the disciples was Jesus. And what did they do? The Bible says they all forsook him and fled. Okay, Mark chapter 14 and verse 50. You and I must not make that mistake again. We don't have that time. We're going to run. Where are you going to run to? No, we're going to go to another place. What's going to happen in that other place? Nothing is going to change. You know that half of us, we want to run away <laughs> because we want to get out of the situation. But the problem is not in the country. It's not in the people. It's not even in the politics. The problem is within you. So when you leave and you run away, what happens? Your problems go with you. You have to deal with them. And when you deal with them, if the Lord says, right, now I want you to leave, then you must go. No problem. Go the same day. But don't think that you're going to go and it's going to be peaceful. It's not going to work like that. So I want to say to you in closing, before I start to pray for you, that you need to understand, the Lord expects you and I to be loyal to Him. Why? Because He is loyal towards us. Take the world, but give me Jesus. You remember that old song? Take the whole world, but give me Jesus. Why? Because He is the faithful one. You see, He cannot be untrue to Himself. That's what the Bible says. He is faithful. He is faith. That's another name. The Lord will never forsake you. So don't run away from him. Don't deny him. Don't turn your back on him. Because he will see you right through to the end. So I'm going to pray for you today. Because I just feel in my spirit, there are some people that are really hurting. Because you've been hurt. Because people have been dishonest. And maybe people have been unfaithful. And maybe people have just dropped you. 
and you just feel absolutely wretched. I want you to spend a moment just thinking of who those people are and forgive them. You say, but I can't, Angus. You have to. Why? Because if you can't forgive them, how can you expect God to forgive you? See, that's how it works. Every one of those disciples died a martyr's death. Do you know that? Not one of them died of old age, including John. And yet all of them ran away and left the Lord. They repented. They said, sorry. The Lord used them to take the gospel to all the corners of the world. And there's, there's only one disciple that didn't come back and repent. What is his name? That's right, Judas Iscariot. He denied the Lord for 30 pieces of silver. I firmly believe. I might be wrong. Maybe the theologians will prove me wrong, but I don't think so. If Judas Iscariot had said, uh, said, Lord, forgive me, I made a mistake, God would have forgiven him. What was worse, to deny the Lord three times or to sell the Lord off for 30 pieces of silver? No difference. What about Thomas? Thomas denied the Lord. He says, I'll believe it when I see it. How did that feel? What you got to do is say sorry. So I'm going to pray with you. That's right. I'm going to ask God to please forgive us for being disloyal. You see, you can't serve two masters. You can't have your cake and eat it, as they say. Matthew 12, 30. He who is not for me is against me. He who does not gather with me scatters abroad. It's either Jesus or nothing. That's right. You cannot serve Jesus and another God. The Lord says, I'm a jealous God. I'll have nothing to do with it. Sir, if you have been married to your wife, remain loyal to your wife. That's why I wear a ring. Not all men wear rings. I'm not judging anybody. I wear a ring. Why? Because I want to tell the world that I am a married man and that I am loyal to my wife. That's why I wear the ring. I don't wear any other kind of jewelry. I don't even wear a watch. But I wear this ring to show the world that I am a married man. And my wife does the same. Once you are committed to each other, stay committed. Yeah, but you don't know what our marriage is like. It doesn't matter. There's no such thing as a perfect marriage. You've got to work through it. You've got to talk to each other, forgive each other, and carry on. And pray every night before the sun goes down. And don't, don't hang on to that unforgiveness, okay? Don't let the sun set on your arguments, but confess it so that God can give you the strength to remain loyal. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for Jesus. I want to thank you for the greatest role model that this world has ever seen. Lord Jesus, you remained faithful and loyal to the bitter end. And on the third day, you rose from the dead and you are seated in heavenly places with your Father. Lord, I'm asking you to please strengthen me and my friends watching this program. That we will not be disloyal. That we will not deny you. That we will not run away from you, Lord. But that we will remain loyal until you come to take us home to be with you in glory forever. I ask this in your precious name. Amen.